we're probably going to be local. Yeah. We don't think it's an accident that yeah. Google is in Mountain View and Twitter is in San Francisco and Facebook is in Palo Alto. Yeah. Why is that? What is it about the Valley? Yeah. Increasing returns, um, so network effect, increasing returns, virtuous cycle. To? Uh, to, innov uh, to, uh, to innovation and the people who want to be involved in, in technology innovation. Um, the Valley has a magnetic pull on the best and brightest. They don't all end up here, and in fact, they don't all want to end up here, but a very large number of them do, and more of them end up here than anywhere else. It's, it's, it's the analogy I always draw for people around here to help them understand why I say this, people around the Valley, is it's, it's like LA for filmmaking. It's like if I want to make like a major, if I want to be a major movie director or screenwriter, you got to go to LA because you can try to do it out of Boulder or you can try to do it out of Seattle and you're probably not going to get anywhere. You're, you're, you're going to have to go to LA because that's where the studios are, that's where all the great talent is, that's where all the actors are, that's where all the screenwriters are, like, that's where everybody is. Um, it's the same thing in tech. Um, you, you know, the really best people generally want to be in the community that the really best people are a part of. They want to work on the most exciting projects. They want to work on the breakthrough technologies. It all tends to aggregate. And that isn't to say that they can't happen somewhere else, right? There are plenty, there are lots of smart people outside the valley. And you routinely see, like, you know, a Skype, you know, becomes explosively successful out of, you know, Europe and out of engineering and talent in Estonia. Um, or a, um, you know, you see these all over the place, SAS Institute, in which like has their own city, like somewhere on the East Coast. Uh, or, you know, Microsoft becoming hugely successful in Seattle. And Seattle has a pocket, and certainly New York has a pocket. Yeah, and there are pockets, and there are pockets in different places. And I think Seattle and New York have, have pockets that seem to be, seem to be durable. Um, lots of other places had pockets in the late 90s. Those pockets have largely evaporated. Um, uh, you know, there have been lots of attempts to, 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 to create the valley. Um, you know, there's a serious pocket, there's a serious pocket, another serious pocket in Israel, so you do see pockets, but um, you don't tend to see the, 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 you don't tend to see the patterns. Like I say, it's Google, Facebook, Twitter, like the, you know, three of the defining companies, they're just, there's a reason that they're here. Um, and so, and it's just, it's, it's just this continuous loop in this feedback cycle. And what's interesting about the Valley is this runs so deep in the culture of the Valley that it spans technology cycles, right? And so the history of the technology industry in the Valley goes way back. Uh, Steve Blank, who's a prominent entrepreneur out here, writes this just absolutely fantastic blog. And he's basically been reconstructing, reconstructing the history of the Valley. So most histories of the Valley sort of start in the 50s with Hewlett Packard. He actually takes it like all the way back to like the, the 20s and 30s and basically says there's like there was like this whole microwave wave at, at one point and then there was all this defense contracting that was happening and like and so it's it, and then obviously through semiconductors and through software and through biotech and through the internet and all these other things that are happening now mobile um, uh, happening now. So it's it's very deep and ingrained in the culture. And if you go anyplace else, you, you just, as a professional really dedicated to the field, it's just a drop off. And people, you know, I sound prejudicial, I sound provincial when I say that, but it, it's just true. Well, and, and what I hear you saying, what I've heard a lot of other people say, and just seems obvious, is that culture is so much a piece of it. Because you've got people are used to taking the leap that you took. Yeah. There's this understanding that you can start a company and it can bomb and you can get right up and go do another one and that's okay, yeah. you're par for the course. That, I think, certainly is missing in New York. Yeah. You spend, you leave an investment bank to go start a software company or start an internet media company. You want to go back to Wall Street, you're going to, have to spend the next year explaining how you ever could have been so stupid to do it in the first place, right. where people understand that. The one question that I have is, do you think it's at all generational, though? Do you think that now that New York, for example, has double click, they have Google spinning off people who are all starting their own companies, there's a, st a startup venture capital community there now? Yeah. Do you think it just takes time, or do you think ultimately it's always going to be the valley and everybody else is just going to be a little satellite? <laughs> so it's much better than it was. So the prospects have never been better. Um, and by the way, the, the, there actually, I believe, is a formula. N not that it's easy to recreate, but you, you need research universities, you need venture capital, you need institutional support in the form of law firms, accounting firms, things, investment banks, things like that. Um, you need um, entrepreneurs, you need engineers, you need executives, you need marketing and sales talent. Like, there, there is an ecosystem, and, and you know, certainly New York has its version of that, Seattle has its version of that. But the draw is really, really powerful. I mean, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, you know, drops out of Harvard. You know, even if you look at what's happened in Boston in the last 20 years, like the Valley, the, the Valley has absorbed a huge amount of what Boston used to have. Mark Zuckerberg drops out of Harvard, in, already lives in Boston, moves to Palo Alto, which was, I mean, and like that was like the right thing for him to do. Um, and so I always try to put the shoe, put, put the shoe, I do, we just do this all the time with entrepreneurs and it drives me crazy. Um, cause I'm like, you know, why are you in Denver? And they'll say, well, you know, blah, blah, this you know, climate and people. And there's not so much, by the way, not so much competition for people in Denver, right? Cause there's fewer startups. And I'm like, well, like, do you want to be best in the world? 
right? And they say, yeah. And say, well, then why wouldn't you be where all the best in the world companies are and all the best in the world people are and all the best in the world sources of capital are and all the best in the world lawyers are and all the best in the world salespeople are? And like, why, why would you ever select anywhere else? And, you know, they, they, at that point they get frustrated. But <laughs> I do it anyway.